Hey, welcome back to the Code Wolf, and welcome to part two of the Blazor file upload series. This series is designed to be the ultimate reference for working with file uploads in Blazor, covering every render mode and scenario, and fully up to date for .NET 8. In this video, we'll explore how to do file uploads with Blazor WebAssembly, which seems to be the render mode that gives people the most trouble when working with files, but it's really not that bad if you understand the flow and the right tools to work with. Please remember to hit subscribe to support the channel and stay tuned for part three. But for now, let's dive into Blazor WebAssembly. If you're new to the file upload series, I've prepared a sample application that's available on GitHub. The link is included in the video description. You can see from the README that we'll cover important file upload topics, such as how to submit form data values alongside an uploaded file upload multiple files at once, how to save files safely both locally and to the cloud, and work with different types of model binding. It's all here for every rendering mode. All right, so with the sample project open in Visual Studio, just make sure that you also have the WASM upload component open, and that lives in the .client project. Remember, in .NET 8, the standard is that this .client project contains all of our components that should be shipped out to the browser to be handled with WebAssembly. And with that component open, we can see some of that at the top here. So first of all, this is available at the slash WebAssembly URL path. And then we inject an HTTP client that we'll look at later. But most importantly, we specify a render mode of interactive WebAssembly. So this will get rendered out in the browser, it'll get sent there, and the user can interact with it all on the client side. Now, below that, we have some page title and message information. So this will get updated after the user submits a file. but the most important part of this is this edit form component a little bit further down. So this is a pretty standard Blazor form. We specify a model. So this is a data object that will handle our submitted data. That data will get bound to this. And we can see that model declared down here. So we have this WebAssembly ticket type. And that class lives at the bottom of this file, just so everything is self-contained. But the user can specify a title and a description. So we can send some data along with the file, which you'll usually wanna do in the real world. Usually you don't just upload a file on its own with no context. But we also have this attachments property, and this is an I read only list of type I browser file. And you really wanna make sure that you're using this specific type, which we'll see in a moment. But basically WebAssembly is gonna provide an I browser file object when the user selects a file from the input control, which we'll see more in a moment but back up on our edit form component. The rest of this is pretty standard fare. So we have our method set to post, and we have an on submit method to handle the form after we submit it. And you wanna make sure that you set this to multi-part form data. This is important. The form will not work properly without this. Now the rest of the form, we have our standard validation components to make sure the user fills out the properties when they submit the form. And down here we have this input file component, and this is the most important part of the form. First of all, we set this to multiple so the user can pick multiple files. But most importantly, we have this onChange handler, so we can bind a method to fire whenever the input changes, or in other words, whenever the user uh, uses the file picker to select a file they want to upload. So on the setFile method, WebAssembly will pass in this input change events argument. And this argument contains the file that the user selected. So in this case, since we're using multiple files, we can use the get multiple files method on this object. But if you were only using one file, you can just access that file directly using a property. But inside of this handler method, we set those multiple files onto the attachments property of our model. So remember our ticket has a title, a description, and an attachments property to collect our form data. So the file part actually gets set separately when the user picks from that input. This is separate from the actual on submit when the user submits the form. And that's one of the confusing parts of this flow. So when they pick a file, that gets set to our model. And then when they use the submit button up here, that's when the on submit actually runs. But we have to make sure that we've stored that file that they selected because that file isn't uh, passed into on submit it's passed into that set file handler. So now in our on submit method, we have access to both that file that was set ahead of time and the submitted form data. 
Now, this next step is the part that can really confuse people. Remember that Blazor WebAssembly runs entirely in the browser, so it's really not designed to just start saving uploaded files to our local system, or obviously not to a server that we'd want to send the file to in a real-world scenario. Blazor WebAssembly needs to take our submitted data and send that over to an API endpoint in a server so that that endpoint can save the data for our app. And to do that, we essentially have to assemble a multi-part form data content request. So we first create that object here, and then we can add our form values, which will just be passed along as string content, so our title and our description. And we just pass in the value to the string content, and then the second parameter is the actual name of that property. So we'll have title and description for model binding on the server side with those appropriate values. Now the next part is the interesting part for file uploads. We essentially wanna take each one of our attachments and add that to the request content as well using stream contents. So we open and read the stream on each file, and then we set the content type and add that to the overall multi-part form data content. So this code here essentially just assembles that multi-part form data content. These types are a little bit wonky to work with if you're not used to it, but all we're really doing here is just assembling a standard HTTP request using Blazor WebAssembly to send all this data to the server with all the right data types and headers and so on. And so below that, we finally make that call to the server where we finally say client.postasync to the slash upload endpoint that we'll look at in a moment, and we pass in that entire content object. So whenever you're trying to do file uploads with Blazor WebAssembly, you just have to assemble this request manually and send that out to an endpoint somewhere. So let's examine what that endpoint actually looks like. So inside this program.cs file, we have this map post method to just add a single endpoint into our file. Remember, in .NET 8, you can add miscellaneous endpoints to your apps using this inline minimal API syntax. Even though this is primarily being used as a Blazor server app, there's no reason we can't add this endpoint here. You can always mix and match different parts of ASP.NET Core together. So we create a post endpoint at slash upload which is where our Blazor WebAssembly will send all of our uploaded form data. And then we bind that data to this WebAssembly ticket type using the from form attribute here. And that WebAssembly ticket is defined down at the bottom here. And this looks almost the same as the class that we used on the WebAssembly side, but I've created a different class because on the server, we really wanna work with iForm file collection for model binding rather than the browser file type we used before, since this will give us some useful properties. Now back up in our method, all we have to do is then loop through each file in our attachments and save those locally. So first we just create a safe file name using some HTML encoding helpers, and then we create a path to the content root of our project in the images folder. So you can see there's an images folder over on the right here. And then we pass in that safe file name as the file name to use. Then we can just create a file stream at that path and copy all of the uploaded files uh, contents into that stream. And that's really all we have to do to save it locally. We just loop through each one of those. At the bottom, I've also added this comment to save the title and description and a reference to that image to a database. We're not really going to get into database operations here but usually you would save the form data in its own row with a reference to the image using its name or possibly a URI, but usually you won't save the image itself into the database. Now, the last piece I wanna cover here is optional, but a lot of people might be interested in this. We could also upload the file to cloud storage, such as Azure Blob Storage. This is a common option as opposed to saving this directly onto a file server or something like that. So further up in our program.cs file, we're adding a call to add Azure clients and then registering a blob service client with our dependency injection uh, container. And we just pass in a connection string to our Azure blob storage uh, service out in Azure. I'm not really gonna get into how all that works in Azure in this video, but I'm just providing this if you're already an Azure developer and want to use that option. Um, you will also need to include a couple of packages for this to work most notably the azure.storage.blobs and microsoft.extensions.azure. Make sure those packages are in there. And just with this simple setup, you'll be able to inject um, your blob service client here. And then we can perform um, a similar saving operation, just uploading that to Azure rather than saving it to our local file system. So let's see what this actually looks like out in the browser since I already have this app running. 
And let's make sure we're on the WebAssembly upload page. And then we can type in a title and a description. And then let's select a few files to upload. So I'll grab these three. And notice as soon as we select those files, that actually triggers our set file method that we talked about. Remember, this method fires when a user selects a file, not when they submit the form. So this is now going to assign um, those attachments to our ticket object. And so you can see there's now three attachments on there because our files were set using this method. So now if I hit continue, we go back out into the browser. And now when I actually submit the form, that's when we land in our on submit method. And if I step through this, you can see that all of our ticket data is now there. So we have our description and our title as well as our attachments because those form fields were bound on submit. Now this method is just going to loop through and it's going to assemble an HTTP request for us. And so I'll just hit continue and we'll land over on the API side. And now if we mouse over our ticket here, you can see that same data came through to our backend and it's all bound. And now we can save these and upload them to the cloud here. So if I were to continue and just kind of navigate through this loop real quick, you can see we're back out in the browser and the upload was successful. Now we can verify that that was successful by looking in our images folder. And sure enough, there's our images. We've got Mario and some others here. And just as importantly, if we go out to Azure, um, again, I'm assuming you kind of know how to use Azure if you're interested in this scenario. But if we refresh this, you can see there's our three images as well. Those were all successfully uploaded. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Please hit subscribe to support the channel and stay tuned for part three, where we'll look at how to do this using Blazor and Server Signal R. And I'll see you next time right here at the Code Wolf.